What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, week nine of the fifth season of the GBA, as we go over what the Giantes are going to bring in our week nine matchup against Old Man Tup and his team, the Pittsburgh Piratitas. Uh, we've matched up against this team before. We did pretty well. We had a 5 0 victory, and I'm looking to recreate that. And there's. There's two things that are very interesting. This being a conference matchup, of course, it being a very important matchup. Uh, me losing doesn't only lose me uh, uh, the opportunity for a win in my conference. It also means that my opponent gets a game up on me also. So it's a two game swing. You know, Tup and I are we're still in the uh, we're still in the running for a potential a potential spot. We have a very competitive, very competitive conference and division and and it's going to be a really important match. I mean, all the matches are important, but this one's uh, going to be pretty important for us too. For me, the interesting thing about uh, a matchup like this, it's the second matchup we've had in a season, and you learn a lot from the first matchup. But the interesting thing is whether or not you choose to act on that, whether or not you switch up things that you saw worked, whether or not the reason something didn't work was because of something that you think they're going to switch, it's a very interesting thing. So for me, because of how commanding the victory was, I felt that it was the team prep that I had put in last time that had ultimately achieved that goal. So with that in mind, although it doesn't seem like it's a great idea, I have very, I pretty much not changed my team for this matchup. And I'm gonna go over why once again. This time you'll see I'm not doing this on Showdown, I'm just going to do this in-game. The Pokemon are here, I'm supposed to be battling in about 3 minutes, I'm just going to try and make this really quick uh, without grazing over the important points for people who didn't see my team builder for the first week or didn't see my match the first time that I went up against uh, the Piratidas. So, uh, I'll go over things bit by bit here and we're going to start with decisions. Uh, decisions the Entei, once again, uh, one of my MVP mons, uh, one of my breakthrough offensive threats. The reason I'm bringing Entei is it's largely because he punches massive, massive holes in in Tup's team, with the exception of just a few Pokemon. Um, I really need the Sacred Fire coverage for, for several reasons, one being the Celebi, who can who can be troublesome for several members of my of the of the Pokemon on my team. Uh, Entei is a relatively good switch into a Celebi. Uh, Celebi doesn't have a ton of firepower. It does have earth power, but that's not a great move against my team outside of Entei, so he would have to predict the Entei to come in, and it being an offensive one is not really something he's likely to predict. Uh, he will speed tie me or potentially beat me if he's an offensive Celebi that's running timid, but, you know, there's this and that. You can't prep for absolutely everything. Last time he opted to try and bring the Celebi uh, as a baton pass set. It didn't really work out well for him. Celebi is handled pretty well by several members of my team and my primary offensive core. So defensively, it doesn't really hold up well. And I need the Entei there to ensure that is the case. I can't drop Entei for that. Uh, uh, he's bringing Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, and Toxic. Toxic being the big change here. I, I was carrying Iron Head. The reason I carried Iron Head was because it hits super effectively on the uh, Mega Tyranitar. The reason I'm not bringing it this time is that I would rather Toxic or Sacred Fire that Mega Tyranitar because a burn on it would be amazing. A Toxic on it would severely limit its longevity if it tries to, it, both if it's a, a defensive variant because it won't have reliable recovery. The burn would be nice because it will very severely hamper its offensive potential. It has the potential to be a very, a pretty strong uh, dragon dancer. And ultimately, I didn't see a whole lot of other reasons for the Iron Head. It would be okay against, it would be super effective against the Kyurem also, but again, Sacred Fire is almost identical in the damage output. Um, but with the burn chance, which once again would be nice for the Q-Room. So I didn't see a situation where I really wouldn't click Sacred Fire or Stone Edge over Iron Head. And for that reason, I think it was probably the... It's worth having the Toxic option there if I think a, a switch is really obvious and I'd love to get a Toxic off on it, which is pretty much any of the Pokemon that I anticipate would switch into an Entei first uh, before I sort of thinned out the, the herd a little bit there. So that's the reason I'm bringing Entei. Mega Pinsir obviously is coming as the second part of my devastating offense. He is Return Quick Attack Close Combat Swords Dance set. 
jolly with max speed uh, to ensure that I'm not that he has to speed creep me with any of his other Pokemon in order to get that um, to get that outspeed. He has a few notable Mons that if they choose to run Modest or Adamant uh, will not be able to outspeed a 105 base. Uh, jolly Pokemon. So doing that for a little bit of safety. Return hurts almost everything on his team. It's pretty crazy actually. Uh, only a few Mon can really handle it. That being Arcanine who obviously can't switch in on the turn I Mega Evolve. Um, Tyranitar can but will subsequently get outsped and O-Code by close combat so he's not a great option either. Jellicent can Potentially, if he's fully physically defensive, survive two returns, but there's no guarantee there either. So really, he he's he's hard pressed to really survive the cuddles. Um, I will say that really hard pressed to survive the cuddles. So uh, my goal this week is to try and really try and really get something out of that. Uh, next we have Ditto. Ditto is here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that I don't have hazard removal. If he opts to bring it, he doesn't have a ton of Pokemon that can set it up. Celebi is a big one, Tyranitar is another. Uh, and he could run Suicide Lead Archaeops as another. Archaeops I don't really see coming. Celebi could potentially be his stealth rocker, but Celebi is also kind of a risky Mon to have be his stealth rocker because there's not a ton of situations that he can set it up super safely that's kind of a, a benefit on on that part and uh I, don't, I, really, I just i don't see the escadrill packing rocks i know that he can also tyrantar is his most likely stealth rocker and he does have the opportunity to get them up and i do have the ability to get rid of them because he's brought escadrill every week i think it's very likely he brings it again this week if he does and he has rapid spin on it uh, i can make potentially some switches there to get a rapid spin off if need be uh, he could also bring the Golbat for Defog, which, again, I could do that. Um, I also do it because he has a couple of setup mons that I would like to be able to take advantage of. One being the Celebi, another being the Excadrill with Swords Dance, uh, another being Nasty Plot on the Thunderous. The Choice Scarf allows me to outspeed any of these setup mons and use their setup to my advantage. Um... Of course, as we discovered last week, and as I did, I have known in the past, but clearly just uh, dropped my mind, Substitute obviously will restrict this. So if he's a sub setup Pokemon, that can potentially be an issue. So I do have a phaser in uh, Nato Nato, the Hippowdon. Nato Nato is uh, pretty much the same set as last time. The notable difference is that I have opted to take Roar instead of Rock Slide this week. The reason I had Rock Slide before was because it had the chance to kill a Thunderous on the Switch if I had Stealth Rocks up. But that's a very weird situation, and if I'm going for the prediction on Thunderous coming in on an Earthquake, I might as well make the same prediction and just go for a Roar to get it out. That way it takes um, Stealth Rock damage, something else takes Stealth Rock damage, and I kind of I move things along that way. Uh, it will allow me the opportunity to take advantage of subsets. One of the things, I just dropped my stylus literally into a tiny hole in my computer, and there's no way for me to show you this, show this to you guys, but um, I really hope, <laughs> I really hope I can get it out. Okay, come on. Come on now, sausage fingers, you got this. I just made it worse. Okay, <laughs> my goodness. Come on now. Come on, Gio. My stylus might be gone forever, guys. How can I do this? Do I need two? Two of my sausagey fingers need to fit into this place at the same time. Ow! That severely injured me. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna cut. <laughs> oh god, I'm such a. All right. So, where was I? Yeah. So, obviously. The Roar won't work great against Submons that are especially offensive, perhaps a uh, Kyurem or maybe the Thunderous. I obviously can't Roar those people out. So for that reason, I kind of prepped for for taking those guys on as effectively as possible. And that means two Mon that are going to play a really pivotal role in that. And that is Trip the Amoongus and Aromalisa the Aromatisse. Now, these two form 
a specially defensive core, both of which can take on life orb modest thunderous very effectively and uh, and also split up to be really offense offense really effective checks to a jellicent to a celebi to a, and to a curum so all of his specially potentially specially offensive or offensively or specially offensive hitting pokemon i wanted to be able to answer aromatis is here mainly as a curum check i think he's going to bring curum this week i think it was strange that he didn't bring it in our first matchup and i think he's going to try and play around things that he might feel that i was unprepared for last time the reason aromatis is my answer uh you might be thinking like blissey will just wall the heck out of it curum learns superpower and i don't think he would bring curum without bringing physically offensive moves to try and take advantage of my specially bulky pokemon that would otherwise try and counter it so in my head and when I was running my calcs, I thought Kyurem would run probably Draco, Ice Beam, maybe Earth Power, and either Outrage or Super Power to try and take on some of my other Pokemon. Luckily, all of the likely physical attacks that Kyurem would bring uh, are not very effective against Aromatis, who has a good HP stat and decent enough defense that he can take those hits pretty well. Uh, Aromatis is fully specially defensive calm nature, so he can easily eat up even neutral hits from Kyurem and can proceed to either Wish Protect, uh, Aromatherapy, or just hit it with a Moon Blast. So it's a very good answer to that Kyurem, um, even if it's choiced. If it is choiced, that makes things even better for me. I can, I can sort of scout for that. If he goes for a Dragon Move, locks himself into, I buy a free turn to Wish to something or to hit a Moon Blast on the Switch. Or to double to try and take advantage. Uh, the reason I'm thinking this deep into Aromatis is that it's it's uh, potentially set up fodder for some Pokemon. It hits a lot of his team really hard. Uh, it can two hit KO the both the Kyurem and the Mega Tyranitar, which both Pokemon I anticipate he's bringing. It's also a really good answer to Machamp as long as it doesn't bring Heavy Slam. Another thing worth noting is that Kyurem also learns Iron Head. So that's something I'm going to have to scout for, see if he's got it. Um, I don't pers I don't think he will because this is my first time bringing Aromatis, and I don't think he's going to anticipate that I'll bring it for this matchup either. Trip is almost the same set as I brought last time. And if anyone's looking at the screen right now, I'm sure they're picking up on something right away, and I want to nip this in the bud right now. Yes, this Amoongus has an Assault Vest, and yes, it has Spore. The reason I'm doing that is that he does have knockoff potential on his team, and if I don't really have a super safe switch into that knockoff potential, for example, if I anticipate the Machamp to come and pack knockoff, if I'm expecting a knockoff from um, uh, maybe the Ambipom, and I could be wrong, but I think Thunderous also gets knockoff. Doesn't Thunderous get knockoff? I'm pretty sure he gets knockoff. Let's type that correctly. Let's type it correctly again. Yeah, it gets knockoff. So, um, on the mixed attacker set. So, what that does, if if he packs knockoff to try and be become a counter to Amoongus, who, with Assault Vest, will eat up any attack he goes for. We saw this last match. Even when I was burned, he was not able to get a two-hit KO on my Amoongus with his Thunderous. So if I do opt to bring the Assault Vest, and he goes for a knockoff, it won't deal too much damage to me, and I'll be able to turn around and spore it on the next turn. Um, he won't anticipate the spore if he's seen that I have the Assault Vest, so it's really there just for that. It is a backup in case I get a knockoff, and I want to turn Amoongus into a different, a different method of walling his team. Because with the Assault Vest, his point is to switch in, sponge up attacks, Maybe shoot off an attack, switch out the next turn to a more appropriate threat. He is a massive pivot for me. He's super important for that. Losing the Assault Vest makes him a completely different type of Pokemon because without the reliable recovery, what I'm forced then to do in order to take a certain Pokemon out of the match is to spore them. So that's what I have it there for. That move takes place of the Foul Play, which uh, I wasn't finding much success with. Obviously, it could potentially be okay against the Celebi, but I'd rather just Sludge Bomb. Again, I, I, it hits super effective on the Jellicent, but as we saw last time, it does absolutely no damage, especially if I'm burned. 
against his physical attackers. Most of them resist it. Excadrill doesn't, but Excadrill's hit almost as hard with the Grass Knot, so why wouldn't I just go for Grass Knot? So I didn't really see the reason to pack it this week for those reasons. I think Sludge Bomb is superior in almost every way as my offensive move option. Grass Knot, again, is that coverage move for me. Clear Smog is to break down some of the potential setup that I might see on some Pokemon to try and break through Amoongus. It's a pseudo hazing or, or phasing for me in addition to the roar on Hippowdon. So that's my entire team, guys. As you can see, it's pretty much... In my head, I just thought, why change what worked so effectively? I want to force him to make changes. He brought what I consider to be one of the best teams to try and take me on. If he makes too many changes, he's going to break that synchrony and then he's going to be bringing a worse team, trying to find loopholes in my former system. Um, the only major change I see him doing is to bring Kyurem. A lot of the other Pokemon are just too easy for me to handle. The Golbat is too easy for me to take out with uh, my offensive threats and doesn't really threaten me back. Uh, the Archeops and the... Ambipom are both walled pretty effectively by Hippowdon. Um... And also, yeah, you know what? Because I can even scout, even if that Amber Palm is running a strange mix set to try and take on the Hippowdon, the only moves it would likely be running can be handled just fine by Entei, allowing me a good switch into Entei also. So it really nets me a lot of options here uh, to kind of look at his team and just assume that those guys aren't coming. But if they are, awesome. That actually makes it better for me. So that's the team I'm bringing, guys. These are already in my battle box, ready to go uh, for the match that I should be having with Tup now. As always, my name's Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.